What's going on guys? Security Guru here. Right now I'm about to do the part 3 of the Hike Vision 4.0 new menu. If you're not aware from our previous videos, I'm offering free support on any DVR, NVR, or cameras in the market uh, due to the current pandemic and everybody is closed or have limited support. So let me know, leave me a comment, or shoot me a message so we can go ahead and help you out. In the meantime, let's jump into part three. Okay, so event, um, motion detect settings. Uh, if I had a camera, which I, I'll set it up in a little bit um, so that we can kind of go through this, but um, motion detect obviously is so that you can set up parameters on where you want the camera to detect motion. Also sensitivity level and all that good stuff. So we'll go, go through that in a little bit. Uh, video tampering again if we had a camera in here uh, this one actually is somewhat camera specific so it's kind of like a little bit of analytics where it'll understand if somebody moved your camera or covered it or spray painted it so that it can either send an alarm trigger or an email alert um, again we'll, we'll take a look at that uh, video lost um, again same concept if somebody was to cut your wire or you lose camera uh, what we'll do is it'll either you know, make a sound and start beeping at you or you can uh, you can make it send you an email alert to let you know that something's going on into the system. So that's 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 pretty good and useful actually, you know, especially if you don't really watch your cameras often. A lot of times people don't put monitors on the camera on the on the DVR. Um, and then when they don't put a monitor on the DVR, they're not really seeing it and they're just hoping that everything is running proper. Um, and then when an incident happens, you go back, you don't see the camera there because obviously you haven't logged in in forever, you know, so the video loss is really good. Um, alarm input is, yeah, so again, if you have, um, you know, motion sensors, door trips and all that good stuff, uh, you can plug it into the system depending on the DVR and NVRs. Uh, some of them do have alarm inputs and outputs. Some of them don't. But, you know, you can kind of control here what you want it to do, whether send an email alert or go to the next step, which is, again, it's going to do an alarm output. So it could, have, it could be a siren, it could be a light. Uh, again, just kind of like uh, your standard alarm system, if, if depending on what you do with that, okay? Um, and then exception, we went through here already so that each individual um, issue will beep at you if you turn it on so again you know it's nice to have this on like i said i just turned it off uh, for the sake of because i don't have a hard drive on there at the moment um, we'll put it in later and then we can um, put it back on so anyways that's that and then smart event smart event um, this is a, a camera specific so there are a lot of different um, video analytics available especially with hike vision you can do human detection, vehicle detection, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, unfortunately, I don't. Ha again, I don't have one plugged in here. But if the if it is available, that smart event is pretty good. Okay. Um, live view. This one. This one is a little bit tricky. So there there is a certain thing where um, you won't see the the mouse pointer. Okay. Um, that that means you probably plugged into the wrong spot. Um, if you take a look here, there is an HDMI 2, okay? If it says video output interface, right? And then you have it on HDMI 2, as far as the setting goes, and then your wire is plugged, your monitor HDMI cable is plugged into HDMI 1, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see cameras live, but you're not gonna be able to go into the menu because that actually is called a spot monitor. So all it's doing is it's showing you the different video feeds um, so that you can like for example if there if you had a liquor store you had a um, you had a monitor outside so you can show your customer you know maybe like four aisles or the entrance to show them that hey you know what we're recording but you don't want to show them the back room you can use this HDMI 2 as a spot monitor but you don't want that to be the um, the, the video output interface you want it to just keep it like this and just leave it at that, okay? And then obviously when you turn on the system, depending on what kind of um, layout you'd want it to automatically open, you can select here, okay? And then 
Um, enable audio output. If you have audio cameras, you can enable this so that you can hear from your speaker through your HDMI. If you have VGA, unfortunately, you're going to have to use a, a, a mic cable or a RCA to um, the 2.5 millimeter because you, you have to have um, the audio output. The, the VGA does not allow you to have audio with just one cable. So HDMI is really friendly, so you could use that. Okay, And then video. This is where you would set up where, how you want the cameras to be positioned. So let's say you already did all your cameras and you already set it up and you know you kind of don't want to fiddle with the cabling and all that good stuff what you can do is you can actually switch switch the different layouts so if you want camera number two to be here and then you want this one to be camera number one you can do that um, and then you can actually remove cameras like so right so again they're still doing stuff in the background but you're um, you're still uh, you're, you're not showing it okay and then for the spot monitor you go here you go to HDMI 2 again you can just show four cameras you can show one camera you know just so that the people don't see the other cameras that you have for the purpose of just showing them you know cameras that you want them to see like I said usually the most commonly used is um, when you are when you have a gas station and you want to set up spot monitor channel zero honestly I don't know what this is for um, when you have this on you'll have a um, you'll have a channel in your software app on IVMS that shows all the cameras in one window actually you know what I think I know what it's for now um, it's actually so that if you if you have limited bandwidth it's not gonna transmit or transfer the cameras individually it's gonna come in one window pixelated probably um, especially if you have 32 cameras um, but you know, it'll give you uh, it'll give you a quick overview or a, a quick view of what's going on. So that's that's what you would do that for. Um, RS two thirty two. This one is for point of sale uh, integration um, or any other devices, but primarily used as um, as uh, for point of sale. So usually for point of sale, just you want this to be transparent channel. A lot of times people forget this. But make sure you put transparent panel because if you leave it on console, it doesn't get anything. So I'll put it there for now and just hit apply. I don't want to because it's going to reboot, so skip it. But anyways, you want to put transparent channel. Holiday, um, this one is, you can set up different schedule based on the holidays. Um, so if you, know, if you change your um, hours during certain holidays, you can automatically do the schedule uh, to do different things, whether it's motion detect um, and all that good stuff. So it, it, it gives you it gives you a lot of different options um, of what you want it to do, um, and then you know you can you can play around with it accordingly. Um, point of sale integration. So this is a little bit tricky. Um, I I'll I'll create another segment for this one on its own because it is a little bit tricky. So what you can do is you can you know add add point of sale into this particular camera again unfortunately I don't have a camera but you know it'll get you into the settings once you get into the settings you're able to you know select uh, the different methods of point of sale integration there's IP there's serial RS-232 like I mentioned um, so there's a lot of different options there that you can play with once you finish so we'll, we'll play with that later Okay, um, and then if you go to maintenance, this one um, is a lot of more technical upgrades and whatnot. So here you can see what your uh, model is and then your serial number if ever you need to speak to a technician. Uh, if you go to camera, it's gonna tell you the status of the cameras, if everything is okay. Um, again, if you have video lost and tampering detection on and motion detect and all that good stuff. It just kind of gives you an overview of what's going on. Here in the import export, this one, you can export the settings. So if you have multiple locations and then you want to, you know, all your schedule settings, all your motion detect settings, um, username and password settings. So rather than having to reconfigure every single DVR over and over again, what you can do is you can simply just export it and then and then import it obviously into the new one right and then and then upgrade so here what you can do is you could do the um, the firmware update this one's a little bit complicated um, I like to do it on Internet Explorer uh, we can talk about that in another video but 
Yeah, so basically this one is where you would update uh, your DVR if you had the firmware on a flash drive. So what you can do is if you had a flash drive, it'll show here. Um, you click upgrade and then you'll see you know the file name and all that good stuff and you click upgrade and then now your firmware will automatically update. But as far as uh, as far as ease of use and stuff like that, the Internet Explorer for me I feel like it's the best. So so uh, yeah. Anyway, so this is it. And then FTP server. This one is if you are trying to uh, get your upgrade from an FTP site, you can put it in there. Again, it's it's this one is not commonly used. Um, online upgrade. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, it's supposed to connect to Hike Vision server, double check what's currently available, and then you check update, upgrade, and then it should come back with a certain uh, thing saying that, uh, you know, there's an upgrade available. But, you know, again, I don't have a hard drive, so we can't even test if it works, but I, I don't usually use it. And then default, um, here are different types of um, defaults. If you are running, um, if you're having issues with the system, you may not want to do a factory default. Maybe just reset all the settings. Um, so basically, what's going to happen is, you know, if you do this, you'll still have all your passwords. You'll still have all your network, um, but all the motion detect, all your schedules will all be gone. So the good thing about that is, again, you know, you don't have to reconfigure your username and password and um, or your network configuration sometimes if you mess that up you can't remotely access the system and now you now you got to start all over and try to get different IP addresses and all that good stuff so you don't want to do you want to do this just to keep it safe but if you are having major issues you want to probably do a factory default um, you know usually a factory default is recommended after you do a firmware update just so that it kind of uh, kind of like when you freshly install Windows it's kind of you know gonna be fresh Again, it's not necessary, but if you did something in an, in that sense, whether it's a upgrade or your system is just starting to act up, a factory default um, is a good test to try to fix it. But if obviously it cannot be fixed, then unfortunately you're gonna have to RMA the system. So you can do that. Um, and then restore to inactive, that means it just basically will it, remove everything. It'll, it'll just deactivate your NVR. It's basically the same as factory reset but um, it deactivates the DVR so that's 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 that okay um, and then this one it kind of just shows you a, a, a different um, setup I guess of how your network is going just kind of showing you the traffic on how everything is going um, and then here you can test if uh, if certain things is available you can run different tests again don't use this too often um, and then here again statistics it's gonna give you stats on um, you know how the cameras are pulling in and out of your um, NVR or, or DVRs this since this one is an NVR you got an IP camera here and it's gonna give you how much bandwidth usage and all that good stuff um, HDD operation again unfortunately I don't have a uh, hard drive in here but again it'll kind of just give you an idea of the hard drive and stuff like that um, and then RTSP we can talk about this in a different thing. You want to enable that um, for mobile viewing, but also there's another thing that you can do with this in the future. So that's that for the menu. Um, and then up here, you can download, um, you know, download upgrades and whatnot. Um, you have like alerts. Again, since I don't have a hard drive, it says hard drive error. Um, and then back up here, um, when you do want to. Um, back up a video of some sort you click on that and then it'll, it'll go uh, it'll allow you to back up that's it guys for the part three section of the hike vision 4.0 new menu setup if you have any questions or any concerns uh, please leave me a message or a comment below um, again if you guys need help please let me know and then don't forget to subscribe so we can go ahead and continue making these videos thank you